We call these areas bottomland hardwoods. They're called that because they occur in these low, flat bottoms that surround the big rivers uh, in the coastal plain along the Atlantic. These bottomland hardwoods are really among our most valuable forests uh, because they are wetland forests and so connected to the rivers and the water system. We started getting reports from eastern North Carolina in particular that vast areas of wetland forest were being cut to supply wood pellets to Europe. We became involved when we learned that contrary to the representations by the companies that they were using sawdust and other wood waste, that in fact they're cutting whole forest, whole trees uh, as their primary source of biomass. Beaver come to this community and say, we're gonna bring jobs and gonna be green. We're going behind loggers and we're just gonna take the trash stuff. And that's what we're gonna make into these pellets. And that ain't what they've done. I mean, it's not even close. If you don't believe it, go to the Viva site and look at all the damn logs. This industry has been deceptive. Uh, they have misrepresented their sourcing but I actually put at fault the countries that are behind these policies. The European Union got together, uh, well, probably 10 years ago, and said, we're gonna be the global leaders on this. We're going to cut our emissions of fossil fuel carbon dioxide, so you've got to supply 20% of your power from carbon neutral or non-carbon emitting sources. It was a laudable thing to do. Uh, except that I think without thinking, they decided that biomass should be carbon neutral. That biomass energy is seen as a neut carbon neutral option, it's a pure political decision. Biomass is pretty easy. You just get some wood and throw it in the coal-fired power plants and you do co-firing. You don't need to change any infrastructure. So it is an easy one and you do get to your percentages. So therefore, any idea to say, hey, but don't we, do, don't we need to do proper accounting was a bit like put on the back burner. So it's, yeah, we'll come to that later on. And that's all pure politics in order to make sure that no matter what, this 20% by 2020 will be achieved. If you're interested in reducing emissions now, then burning something that puts more carbon into the air than the thing you're replacing, which is coal, doesn't make sense. And it's just a fact that there's more carbon coming out of the stack when you burn wood than when you burn coal. The physics are the physics. There's CO2 coming out of the stack. There's nothing special about that CO2 that makes it have less climate warming potential than fossil fuel CO2. The industry likes to make it sound like it's super complicated. You know, leave it to the experts, don't trouble your heads, we got it under control, we would never do anything to harm the climate. Well, they are, and they will, and they do, and they'll get you to back them up by telling you that it's green and clean, and you end up being duped by this industry. Switching to biomass from coal can reduce carbon emissions by between 74 and 90 percent. The claims that Enviva is making are based on just not counting any of the CO2 that's emitted when you burn biomass. The carbon accounting framework that they use only counts the emissions that are associated with harvesting and transport, but they would not count the CO2 that's emitted by burning it at the stack. And this was identified as the critical climate accounting error in the Tim Searchinger et al. paper, which was so important in getting this conversation started. So here's where the actual accounting error came from. In a long story, uh, we ended up developing an accounting rule for global national reporting that said for bioenergy purposes, we're gonna count the carbon when you cut down the tree so we don't have to count it again when it goes up the smokestack. And that rule works if and only if you're actually counting the carbon when you cut down the tree. 
But the U.S. isn't really reporting those numbers, at least not in an official way. And the U.K. is not reporting trees that are being cut down in the United States. So when it comes to those trees being burned in U.K. power plants, those emissions are treated as zero because if you were counting it both when the tree is cut and at the power plant, then you'd be double counting it. So a rule that's designed to prevent you from counting carbon twice became a rule that says you never count it at all. Once that mistake had been made, uh, all kinds of people uh, started thinking, well, bioenergy can help solve our climate crisis. The problem is that this mistake happened to also coexist in a way that would allow people to make a lot of money. By reliably providing customers throughout the world with an alternative to coal, Inviva is part of a cleaner, greener, low-carbon energy future. The only green in this industry is the enormous amount of money that these speculators are making in this pellet industry in response to a policy in Europe that makes no sense. So when people talk about massively increasing bioenergy, what they're talking about is massively increasing the amount of trees we harvest on the planet. The mistake that thinking that trees are carbon free, which leads you to harvest wood, uh, could become a truly dramatic mistake if you keep making that mistake. One study that was done by researchers at the University of Maryland uh, basically showed that to produce something on the order of a little more than 20, 30 percent of world energy by 2100, you would have cut down all the world's forests. So part of where we are right now is that we don't see the problem in Europe because the solution came from imports from the U.S. We now have a traffic jam of boats on the North Sea coming here. And a little anecdote, in 2007, we made a McKinsey study showing that the shortage of wood would be enormous. At the very last meeting, we were drinking a beer, finalizing the study, and someone said, let's get it from the US. And the entire team of consultants said, no, that would be stupid. Since we will be discussing now the policies in place until 2030, it becomes very important that we have the criteria right, that we have the accounting right. So the discussion that are coming up is really crucial at the moment. I think the political fight is going to be that everyone will acknowledge that, no, of course, burning a tree is, is, is a stupid thing to do. But we are not doing that. They will all play the game to say, no, we are only using waste flows. Well, it's going to be very important that we are getting this proof on the table to show really, guys, what we are doing here is not burning waste flows. We are just burning round wood and trees here. And certainly the public should not be subsidizing actually putting more carbon into the atmosphere in the name of addressing climate change. And when those subsidies go away, which I think they will, this industry is going to go away as fast as it appeared in the U.S. And we have to be actively reducing carbon dioxide, not even just holding it constant. The best technology for that is trees.